Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make an RPG in Unity and welcome to episode 22. So this time I'm going to build up this village a little bit more to give it a bit more character to it. Uh, we're going to add in a boss and we'll carry on looking at that player prep we started last time and we'll also get this person actually giving us the quest. So what I'm going to start with is the player prep. Now, if you remember, last time we had in the saving, there, save gold, it saves whatever gold we have. Now, I think a good way of showing how this is going to work is as soon as we receive the gold from this quest, it'll save for us. Now, best way to do that, if we go to our quest complete object, which is... Uh, complete trigger. So if we go into quest 001 complete, what we can do is after we have this gold amount there, let's take that line of coal, that uh, code I should say, not gold, take that line of code and place it there and save. So what will happen is when we receive this gold, it will save it into this player pref name. And when we load the game, we want to be able to display that. So a good way of doing that is if we go on save gold <clears throat> and instead of having it set the integer, let's delete that line out and let's place it um, within something else. So let's have public int and let's have this load gold semicolon. In void start, we'll do load gold equals player prefs dot get int and in brackets and quotes we put in the name of what we actually called it which was gold amount save gold amount save quote close bracket semicolon so what's happening here is when we start the game whatever is previously been saved in this particular player pref will be loaded into this variable right here. Now I'm going to attach this script to an empty game object. So game object, create empty, and I'm not going to rename it. I'm just keep it as it is for now. And I'll drag and drop save gold onto there. And we can see low gold is zero. So let's put this into practice now and let's see this actually working. So if we take the quest, accept, and we hurry all the way over here, all the way over here, and we complete this quest as intended. Now, because we've put that saving the player pref into the script, it will save it the instant we receive the goal because it does it all in the same frame. So, Oh, you can still see him walking around there. He looks all right. So let's hand it in. And there we go. Now you'll notice the load gold over on the right in the inspector panel, just here, hasn't actually changed, but it has on the screen. This is where it gets interesting. If we stop the game and start it again, it'll load up that 100 that we already saved. So this is how player prefs can work, especially when it comes to saving and it's something that is going to be vital to us further in development. Uh, let's right click and let me see, let's rename this object just for now and have player pref test because we're going to kind of need to use this to pass um, variables between the game itself perhaps when we change scenes around. So the next thing I want to do is I would like to build up the village, at least uh, this little section of it. And I've gone to the asset store and I've gone to one of my favorite uh, assets, which is the Mega Fantasy Props Pack. And I absolutely love this one. I, I think there's so much in it, especially for a free asset. There's so much to it. And th there's so much you can build with it. So if you import it, download it, and get things ready. I've already gone ahead. Uh, I'll keep that as a store open because we're going to use that again a little later on. 
and I already have it here and we can see just how much is within uh, look at all this here it, there's so much to it so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to build up this little village so I will see you guys in a couple of minutes Okay, so there we go. I've just quickly put all that together. It's nothing too fancy. It just kind of encases the village around and creates two gates to actually get out of the village. Uh, a couple of little props here and there, just to make it look a little bit more lived in. So I honestly do recommend taking a look at this package because there is so much to see and do from it. Now, what we're going to do in here is once we've picked up our sword, we're gonna have this NPC give us the next quest and the key to get out of the village. So what we'll do is let's finally take this sword and let's turn it off. And at the moment, if we go on the NPC, we can see that the uh, NPC 001 script, if we open it up, basically says um, that we can't really do a whole lot. So we need to kind of work with this script to say, ah, actually, we can do this now. And we can do that via the quest manager script. So if we go back to scripts and go into quest manager, we can see the active quest number. When we change, or rather when we complete the first quest, let's set this active quest number to, let's say, two, which means that we can move on to the second quest. So if we go to the complete trigger, which is down here, and if we go to that, quest 01 complete, after we've saved that player pref, let's go to quest manager dot active quest number equals two. Semicolon and save that script. And if we go to Quest Manager, yep, that should be okay, so that'll update. So if we go to NPC 001, what we need to do here is change this around. So in the I enumerator, we'll put an extra if statement. So if, and in brackets, let's have, um, what can we have it? It's Quest Manager dot active quest number equals two then we do the following and what we'll do is we will set all this active again so we'll copy what we already have here place it here and we'll go over here and we'll type in we have a spider problem can you go outside the village kill the spiders and their boss. Here is the key. So because we've set that in place now, when we uh, complete our first quest, we'll be able to accept this quest from them. So what we need to do after this is say else, open curly bracket, and then encompass everything here in that else statement. So then close curly bracket and save. So because the active quest is two, she's saying something different. So obviously we need to do a little bit more here. So because we have that um, quest now, we should be able to go to the exit to the village here and open these gates and to do that we're going to need to do the same sort of principle we've had for the first quest when we picked it up so if we go to game object 3d object cube 
bring it into position there. Stretch it so as it covers uh, where we need it to. So about there. And obviously on the Y as well. So let's create a script for this particular object. So in the quests folder, right click, create, C sharp squish, uh, script, sorry, quest 002, start. So this quest 002 start is going to start the moment we open this gate here. So let's go into uh, Visual Studio. So basically what's going to happen is it'll be the same as if I can find it. Um, quest 001 take. So we're going to use the same principle. And we're going to use the public distance display text. So let's take those three variables from quest 01 take and go into quest 02 start. Place them there. And so let me close some of these scripts here because I don't want things getting a little bit confusing. So these two scripts are next to each other now. Uh, void update, obviously we can use that line of code again. Go in void update. And we can use pretty much all of this. So if we take from void on mouse over to on mouse exit, copy and place that into quest 002. And let's get rid of that note there, we don't need it. So on mouse over, if the distance is less than three, then we need to not allow our sword to, to swing. Uh, if the action button is pressed, we do need to uh, get some stuff done. So we don't need this minimap because we're not going to a separate cutscene here. Uh, we don't need these others that are underlined as well because they're not part of what's going on here. What we do need to happen though, is we need to change the text to say open gates. So on uh, mouse over, what we do is if we go here and when it goes over, let's have um, action text dot get component and text. Okay, so we do need to have the namespace using unity engine dot UI up there, and then we can change that to text. Up close bracket dot text equals open gate. Semicolon and save. So What's going to happen here is we're going to attach the script to this object and although it will kind of work straight away, we need to get all the bits and bobs of the rest of it together because it seems like we're pulling bits from here, there and everywhere at the moment, but don't worry, it all comes together quite nicely in the end. So drag and drop that script onto the cube and let's set those two objects. Uh, as a reference as well, everything I've just built, apart from these two gates here, I've put into a separate game object called Village Stuff. Uh, so yep, let's set the action display to find the canvas. So action character is gonna be, that's right, that's the E key, isn't it? So action character is gonna be display, and uh, action text is action text. Let's turn off the mesh renderer on the box, uh, on the cube, sorry. Press play. Now, although um, our NPC here will still say that to us, uh, may have a quest if we uh, if we want it. Um, there was a bug there. We need to sort that one out, don't we? We'll have another debugging session pretty soon. If we go all the way over here to the exit, we can still open the gate. Spider got us there, but again, don't worry. It's just one of those bugs that we'll be able to sort at a later date. For now, I may move the spider a little further away, just so we can kind of get things working as expected. Let's bring it to about there. So what we'll do is let's check that it works now that our NPC will tell us that we can have another quest. So obviously we know right now she doesn't, so let's accept the quest. Let's go get the sword. 
and then we should be able to see that she gives us the next quest. So let's head all the way over here. We've done this far too many times, haven't we, guys? Let's take the sword. Let's hand it back in. If we get there, eventually, I may speed up the, uh, the walking speed and running speed of this character. Uh, let's hand it back in. And now if we go here, she should give us the next part. We have spider problems. We have our spider problems. <laughs> Terrible grammar there. I'll have to sort that one. So you can see that's how the second quest is now coming to fruition. And at that point, it would make this part active so we could open the gate. So let's quickly change um, that. If I can remember, I just need to go to NPC into there. I'll just put we have a spider problem, not a spider problems, and save. So the last thing I'm going to do is there's obviously going to be a boss involved with this one, and you probably saw it at the beginning of this episode. So I'm just going to go over here a little, and in the asset store, if I go back a little, there is an asset called green spider so this or spider green this is what we're going to use as our first boss uh, import download whichever you need to i already have brought it in and i'm going to place it into our scene so it's in enemies for me and spider green prefab spider there we go let's turn them around 90 degrees and that's perfect in fact I'll do 180 so he is going to be our enemy so we're going to have these little spiders coming at us and he's going to be the boss so next episode we're going to combine everything together for this quest so we'll get this gate opening so we'll use a bit of animation there and we're going to use something called nav mesh and that's going to allow the spiders to kind of be restrained on where they can go when they come for us. So we'll also work on the kill count as well to make sure we complete that quest. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.